Six years ago, I left my life in England behind and joined my family to take on the daunting task of restoring this stunning French chateau. Three years later, I started a YouTube channel. And since then, we've shared our story with viewers all around the world. And not forgetting all the friends who've helped us along the way. We do everything ourselves, from restoring the gardener's cottage, maintaining the huge forest and estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were over 100 years ago. A lot has changed, but we've barely scratched the surface. And our journey here has only just begun. My name's Michael, and I'll be your host for this amazing adventure. This is Doing It Ourselves. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. We're currently stood behind the chateau and we are still searching for the tunnel. Now, the tunnel that I was digging last week, we now know that that doesn't go to the original tunnel that we're looking for. It actually goes to another well, which is the other side of the tunnel. And we know that because a gentleman came to visit us during the week and now he's 88 years old. He was born at the chateau in 1935 and his family used to look after the estate for the original owners. Now he knows where the tunnel is, he showed us where the entrance is, but unfortunately it's buried. It's been filled in and we're gonna to have to do some major excavation work to find it. But we know that the tunnel that I was digging last week, that just goes under the wall through a little tunnel and then it goes into a big deep well and that's been buried, it's been filled in. So that is not the tunnel. So the search continues but unfortunately, we can't use the digger today because it's broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into the chateau and I'm going to tell you about an amazing discovery that I made and how we might be able to put back one of the lost original features of the chateau, which is very exciting. So if you'd like to come with me into the chateau, we're going to talk about the original wall covering from the dining room. So welcome to the Chateau's dining room. Now, I want to tell you a little story about this chateau and how it was almost left to ruin. Now, the chateau was originally bought in 1921 from the man who had it built. After he died in 1919, it was bought in 1921 by the Pellier family. Now, they owned it from 1921 to 2000, the year 2000. And their, that family had many, many happy years here. They sold it to, uh, a, I think she was a Malaysian lady and we don't know much about her, but she disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to her. Uh, they couldn't find her. So what happened is, I think she had a mortgage with the bank. So the bank repossessed the chateau and they had an auction and to pay off her bills, they auctioned off the entire contents of the chateau. During that time that it was left empty, it was, it was left to ruin. I mean, I'll show you a photo now of it in 2005. It was completely and utterly abandoned. It was, it was in a terrible state. Uh, and then it was bought at an auction. And that man who, he was an electrician, he bought the chateau and he did a lot of things to kind of put, put it back into a good state. But he did some terrible things at the same time. He decided that he didn't like all the original wall coverings in the chateau. Now there were tapestries in the entrance hall, hand woven tapestries that covered all of the walls that are now just plaster. And in the billiards room, there were also tapestries in there, which he removed. And in the dining room, where we stood now, if you see, I'll show you around in a bit, um, but there now is a red fabric. Now the red fabric is very pretty, but it's not a very good quality and it's not the original wall covering. Right, so just behind me is, is uh, well, obviously you have the, the wooden panelling, which starts here, and then in you have the, is it, these inserts. Now, originally, we were told that these inserts contained 
an embossed leather wall covering. Uh, and it was, we were told it was Moldovan leather, and we've had many different stories about people who said how beautiful it was. Now, for some reason, the man who bought the chateau after it was abandoned ripped it out. Now, we don't know if he either, either he didn't like it or it was damaged when the squatters were living in here. So he ripped it out and unfortunately there aren't any photographs of it. We don't know what, what it looked like. Or do we? We'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, so yeah, that was ripped out and we thought, well, it, a hand embossed leather wall covering, like it's never, we're never gonna be able to recreate that. It was created 120 years ago. We don't know what it looked like. We don't know the manufacturer. Uh, it, companies like that don't exist anymore. People that make hand embossed leather wall coverings, they don't exist. So that was it. We thought, well, whoever ripped out the original wall covering, put this red fabric in, and left it at that. And we thought, well, we'll just leave the red fact. Maybe we'll replace it one day with something a bit nicer. But that's, that's the end of that story. Or is it? So, I was in the basement about a week ago, and I was having a, a rummage around, and I found an old cardboard box hidden at the back of the, the, the dingy dark cellar over there where nobody goes. It's where we put junk. And I found, yeah, I found a box, and in that box, was the original wall covering. Let's go into the basement and I'll show you what I found and we'll talk about the amazing, 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 amazing thing. Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, right? Because, you know, we, it, we might be able to replace it, but we won't talk about that yet. We'll go and have a look at it first. So come with me. Let's go. Okay, welcome to my workshop in the basement. Now, if you care to enter, actually, you stand there, because I'm going to go back here. Oh, try not to trip over. Can you see this? Look down here. These are the shattered fragments of the original leather wall covering for the dining room. What we thought was lost to history has been rediscovered. So come and have a look here and we'll talk about it in a bit more in detail. So as you can see here, this is the original leather wall covering for upstairs in the dining room. Um, it was left, it was ripped out and it was, it was folded up and put into a cardboard box and just dumped in the basement. But that's a good thing because we now know what it looked like. But that's not where the, uh, that's not what, the story doesn't get, end there. Okay, let's, let's go into it. So in fact, I was having a look at this and if you can see here, it's got like a canvas fabric backing, okay? Which is whatever it was, was glued onto a canvas and attached to the wall. So I was looking at this um, and I found a piece where the back had peeled off, the canvas back had peeled off and I found a name. I found a name stamped on the back. Now let me find that piece. As you can see here, there is writing. It's illegible, you can't read it. Uh, and it's the same with all of it. It's all illegible, except for one piece. I'm gonna have to fold this, it's, it's, uh, it's damaged anyway, it's beyond repair. But here it says Lincruster Walton, okay? Now I thought, Lincruster, I know that name, that exists. So I, I went online, the, the, the company still exists. Uh, it's an English company. It was founded in the Victorian era by Frederick Walton. And he, he made a few amazing inventions. He invented linoleum and he also invented this stuff. So it's not leather, it's actually a lino based product. Um, so I've done some research into it and actually Lincruster is a natural product. It's made from uh, linseed type putty, 
with a binder. In this case, I think it might have been a wood flower, which is wood that's ground up into a dust, sawdust basically. And what they do is they put it onto like a paper or a fabric backing and the putty and they pass it through rollers, which embosses the pattern on and sticks it to the backing. And then it's left to cure. And what you end up is, is a top, it's a product that looks almost like a leather. Um, now, apparently Lynn Cruster, once it's manufactured, it stays soft uh, and workable for about two years, after which point it cures and it goes solid. So this is why it's cracked. Now, Lynn Cruster, normally the wall covering, you would paste it to the wall like a wallpaper. But in this case, in the Chateau, what they did is they actually glued it onto a canvas backing and they hung it like a tapestry and nailed it onto the, to the, like a framework underneath and, and put like a beading around the edges so you couldn't see where it was attached. Which is, in this case, it's good because that means it's been removed because if you try and remove this from a wall, it, you, it will just break into a million pieces. But because it's had this fabric backing glued to it, there are, in, there's enough pieces of it that you can actually see what it was like. So, where does the story get interesting from here? Because this, as you can see, is completely destroyed. So I thought to myself, well, you know, it's never going to be, it was manufactured 120 years ago, we're never going to be able to replace it. So just on the off chance, I sent an email to Lynn Cross to the company and uh, explaining, you know, this is the original wall covering. And we found some and, uh, and you know, what are your thoughts on it? And um, I got an email back the same day from Alison, Alison Keane, who's the head of marketing and sales for Lynn Cruster. And she was very, very excited to talk to me. So we had uh, a phone chat, we had a chat on the phone, and we're now in talks with Lynn Cruster, the company, to remanufacture this wall covering, exactly the same as it was originally. Now, unfortunately, the, the metal rollers that they use to manufacture it, you have two rollers, you have a solid roller and you have an, like a, a hand engraved roller with, a, with the opposite of the pattern, sort of recesses. So what happens is that's passed through the rollers and the pattern is stamped into the, into the product. Now, they have said that they might be able to hand engrave a new roller. Um, and recreate this beautiful wall covering. Now, I've got a piece here. Well, Lynn Cruster, as it comes today, like this was when it was manufactured, comes out white or an off-white creamy color. And years ago in the factory, they would have hand, some people would have hand painted these patterns, um, but now they don't paint them. They don't come pre-painted. So if we could reproduce it, it would come white. And then I would have to use paint like they did here and repaint the brown parts and the black parts. Now, what they've done is this, this part here is actually it's painted to, to match the wood panelling. And so what you would have had is you would have had a black background and then you would have had a, this, what would appear like a, a trellis work all over the wall. It would look like it was carved from wood. And the style of this is what's called Neo-Renaissance. It was like a Renaissance revival that came back in the sort of, I think it was the Victorian era. And the pattern is an arabesque, but in France it's called Beaux-Arts. Beaux Les Beaux-Arts, oui. Les Beaux-Arts, okay, so, um, which means beautiful art. Yeah, that's it. Or handsome art. Yeah, it means, beautiful, beautiful. So you have these, here you have tulips. I'm not sure, these, these could be sort of acanthus leaves. I'm not sure, if anyone knows what this is, can you see that? It's like, a, it has leaves and it has these sort of like, almost like berries. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but if someone could identify that for me and put a comment, I'd be really grateful because I don't know what that is. But we know that they are tulips. I've spoke to the people at Lincruster and they are certain that they can make it again. But we're just, at the moment, we're looking into costs because they have to, they have to hand engrave a new roller with this pattern. And in order to do that, they need, they need some of this wallpaper. I call it wallpaper, it's, um, it's linoleum. But I tell you what, it's a really interesting fact about this. This product, Lincruster, was on the Titanic. Now they used, they used Lincruster wall coverings in the first class staterooms. And I know that because I've seen photos of it. And also the man, Frederick Walton, who invented this product, also invented linoleum. So on the Titanic, all of the, if you've ever seen the movie or if you've seen any photos of it, it looks like all the floors are tiled. 
but obviously they couldn't tile all the floors on a ship like that because it would make the center of gravity too high. It'd be too top heavy, so it would roll. So what they did is instead of using tiles, they used linoleum tiles, which are very thin and very light, and they actually glued them to the floor. So if you ever see the movie, it's lino, lino tiles on the ship, on the grand staircase, all of that, they're all lino tiles. These kind of wall coverings from that period are very historically important, and a lot, a lot of them exist because obviously years ago, you know, people, fashion's changed, people rip these out and it doesn't last. Because it's a natural product and it cures, it goes hard after two years. As soon as you try and peel this off, it snaps. Snaps and in, breaks into hundreds of pieces. So it's very rare to find examples of this that still exist. In order for the company, Lincruster, to manufacture a new roller, they need some examples of this shipped to them. So they need, I've checked on here, you see, you, on all wallpapers you have a repeat. It's the repeat length. So you can see from here, this square to here is one repeat, and that's exactly 50 centimetres. Now, the original width of a roll is also 50 centimetres, but this part has been cut off. Now, I spoke to Alison at Lincruster, and she said they need, if the repeat is 50 centimetres, they need a double repeat, which is one metre, of the full width of the original wall covering by one metre. They need that shipped to the factory. And she also would like, for the showroom in London, or the head office, she would also like a half a metre section sent there so that they can have it looked at um, in order to manufacture a new roller. Now, it'll have to be hand engraved. We don't know how much that's going to cost. It could be really expensive. It might be too expensive that we can't do it. But if they can, within a reasonable price, manufacture a new roller, we can put it back. So we need to now go upstairs because all of the broken pieces are down here in the basement because they can't be saved. Now, the few pieces upstairs that are in better condition, we put them upstairs in one of the empty bedrooms. So I need now to go up there and find 1.5 metres that's still intact, if there is 1.5 metres, we don't know that yet. Um, we need to look at it. I need to get some scissors. I know it sounds awful to cut it up, but it's the only way it can be really manufactured is to actually, is to, is to cut some pieces out and send them, send them off to the Lincroster factory in England so that they can make it again. So let's go and get some scissors. All right, let's go. We've got to go up one more floor. see what we've got left of the original wall covering. Let me just move these beds out of the way. Ooh, try and pick it up without breaking any of it. Here we are. Let's lay it over here. Right, here we go. These are, you see here, these are the joins. They're the joins. Uh, and a lot of them have been folded off of the joints, which has caused a lot of damage. And we've got some here. Now this might be the piece that they use to recreate it. It's very sad that we have to do this, but it needs to be done so that we can recreate it. Because if they haven't got it, they haven't got an, enough examples of it, then they can't recreate it. So we're gonna have to remove it from its fabric backing by cutting down the join here. You've got to be very careful because it's fragile. Now at the minute I'm just cutting the fabric, not the actual wall covering. Okay, so that's one piece. We need to pick the best parts. So I'm going to have to take this off too.
Okay, so we've removed that pot. Yeah, one meter. So we'll go just above the repeat. Oh, this is the moment of truth. Oh, that's, that was horrible cutting that. <sighs> so we need, that's 50 centimeters from there to there. So we'll give them one repeat. They need two repeats, but we'll go just below the repeat. But that's the best piece we've got, I think. I've got these pieces down here, but they're absolutely filthy. So in order for the people at the factory to be able to see the pattern properly, I'm gonna try and give it a clean. So I'm just gonna, I've got some white spirit. Now it sounds quite harsh, but I'm, I'm hoping the, lins, uh, the, the white spirit will soften up the linseed. So, it, cause it's very fragile. This in the post, it could, if it gets bent or it, or it could crack and fall to pieces in the, in the shipping. So we need to kind of soften this up a little bit. So let me just try a little bit of white spirit and see. Oh, wow. It's working. Yeah. Wow, look at the difference. This one, this one it looks fresh. So that's what it looked like originally. Oh wait, it's lovely. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it is. I'm hoping that this white spirit will sort of go into the, um, the old cured linseed and just soften it up a little bit just to give it a bit of suppleness, if possible. I don't know how porous it is, but I can't send it in this condition because it will just fall to pieces in the post. That is, uh, it's taking out the creases. It's work, yeah, it's working. It was like stiff, it was yeah. really stiff before, but now it seems to, yeah, here, it's, it's work, um... it was like ready to break, but what obviously this, this, uh, this white spirit is actually softening up yeah. slowly. Plus it's revealing the beautiful pattern. You can see the difference now. Just make sure that's clean. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. So if you look here, this piece, I've cleaned it. I put a tiny bit of oil on it just to try and soften it up a bit. Um, and the, the white spirit hasn't attack the paint at all. In fact, it's softened it up a bit. It's uh, not as brittle as it was just 10 minutes ago. So what I'm going to do is very, very, very carefully, very carefully, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to place it against the wall. And I want you to stand back and film that. So can you see here that the, this trellis pattern is painted in exactly the same colour as the oak panelling underneath. So what, what, if, what you would have seen years ago, you would have walked in and it would have, this, the black part here would have sort of blended away into the background and you would have had this beautiful trellis work all over the walls and it would have looked like it was sort of hand carved um, out of wood. It would have looked like part of the panelling. If we just bring it down very carefully, because if we break that, this is one of, one of the only pieces left that's in good enough condition. Can you see here, if I turn that sideways, you see this pattern here? Mm. It's exactly the same as the wood carving there. Uh, that will go off to the factory in England and the other piece will go to the head office uh, in London and they'll have two examples and hopefully their engraver will be able to reproduce that pattern exactly as it was. And if they can do that, we'll have the original wall covering put back as it should be. And there you go, because that is the idea. I, I, the bedrooms can be changed, the decor, that's fine, but these grand rooms were designed by an architect and they would have designed everything down to the wall coverings, the, everything, the wood carvings. Uh, and these, this is just, it's so sad that it's not as it should be. So if we can put it back, if we can put this back, we can put anything back. 
And I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you for another video very soon. And hopefully we'll have some news from Lean Cruster as to whether they can remake this pattern or not. But fingers crossed they'll be able to do it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.